Jacob Arminius, what, 50 years later, came out and he said, well, I don't really believe with all of Calvinism. He was a Calvinist. I think you can lose your salvation. Well, John Calvin said you can lose your salvation. I think we have free will. We have the choice. Look, Arminianism and Calvinism are both doctrines of devils. Both of these camps preach a false gospel, and both of them come out of the Roman pagan Catholic Church. We are not from Rome. We are from Christ. The doctrines that we teach and preach come out of the Word of God. And just because somebody 500 years ago came up with some brilliant idea to change the gospel, we're not going to go along with it. Too many Baptist churches today, they have been convinced they believe what John Calvin said over what Jesus Christ said. And they try to eliminate what Jesus said. And well, you can't save yourself. Hey, no, no dove, right? I can't be good enough to get to heaven. I can't go die on the cross and get into heaven. Hey, I need Jesus to save me. But in no way does that mean that, there is a, that, that choice has been eliminated. And this is what Calvin is, is essentially that you don't have a choice. It's not up to you. If you end up in heaven or hell, God decided that and he calls that a gift. That's grace. Look, that's not grace. Grace means gift. The gift of God is salvation. The gift of God is not Calvinism. And there are many people that don't understand this. I mean, Revelation 22, it says, Whosoever will, let him freely take the water of life. Right? Let him take the water of life freely. That's up to you. It's your choice. Do you want to be saved? It's up to you. And Calvinists don't like that. They want to choose Calvinism over the gospel. But we are accountable. We have to make a decision. Way back in the Bible, you go back into Genesis, and there is God speaking to Cain. And he said, hey, hey, your sacrifice wasn't accepted. And he said, sin lieth at the door. Now, Cain had to choose which door he wanted to walk through. Salvation or reprobation. Do I want to become a son of God by obeying him and believing him? Or do I want to become a son of the devil? Cain chose to become a son of the devil, right? It tells us that he was of that wicked one. That's why he slew his brother. He killed his brother because he was jealous. God did not accept his sacrifice because he brought of his own works. You can't work your way to heaven. It has to be faith alone. The Calvinists would say, well, God made Cain choose to be a son of the devil. That's not true. God presented himself to Cain and said, here's your choice. What will it be? Here's your choice. What will it be? Right? He did the same thing with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is going down the road. He's blinded. There's an angel there. Why kickest thou against the pricks? God revealing himself to Paul says, hey, you're fighting against me. Do you want to still fight against me? Do you want to become a reprobate, a son of the devil like the rest of the Pharisees? Or do you want to become a child of God? Paul said, whoa, I want to be a child of God. He said, good, then go and I'll show you someone and that man will tell you words whereby you can be saved. And he believed the gospel he heard. He got saved. It was Paul's choice. The Calvinist does not believe that. They would say, well, God picked Paul to be saved, and he picked Cain for hell. And you, you just think about that. If God were here today, and he says, well, Brother Dale, that's a nice suit. You're going to heaven. You can go to heaven today. Brother Alex, I like those sunglasses. You can go to heaven. I like that blue tie. You can go to heaven. And the rest of you go to hell. What a strange view of God. Yeah. Listen, he died for every single sin in the entire world. Salvation is a free gift. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. It's available to everyone. God has not excluded anybody from the gospel. Amen. You have to hear the gospel and choose to believe it to be saved. Right. And that is what Calvinism tries to eliminate. A Calvinist would tell you you're already saved without even hearing the gospel. Well, how does that work? Well, God forced this faith into your heart. And as soon as you hear it, you'll know and you'll believe. You think about how strange this is. You can't force a gift on somebody. Look, if you call me up tomorrow, hey, Brother Fannin, I just bought a brand new 80-inch TV, and I got one of those big old boxy tube TVs. I'm bringing it to your house. It's my gift to you. I'd say, uh, no, you're not. I don't want that gift. I have a choice in whether I receive a gift or not. You say, no, 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 no. On my sovereignty, I'm giving you this big old TV. I say, hey, you can go throw it in the dumpster. But don't bring it to my house. I don't want it. I'm not disposing of it. I'm not bringing it in the house. You know, I won't receive your gift. We have to choose. The Calvinist doesn't believe that. Oh, I, I have to take the TV. It was a gift. Right? They don't understand. And, and it's funny because they choose to believe Calvin, but they don't think you can choose to believe Christ. It's kind of odd, right? Choice is the main factor in salvation. Because you think about, well, what about the people that worship devils in the Old Testament? What about those that chose to worship Moloch? Oh, well, God made them do that. 
But, but when they worship Moloch, they threw their children in the fire. Yeah, God made them do that. Look, that's not right. Yeah. God said, you did things that didn't even come into my mind right. when you did that. And a Calvinist would say, no, God made them do it. No, God said, I didn't even think of that. Why would you do such a wicked thing? Yeah. Such a perverse thing. Yeah. 